Hello, everybody. Hunter Bakes here, back with another review for y'all. All right, here we're with part two of the of my favorite Undertaker rivalries viewer by the. Uh, uh, y'all should know what happened there. Uh, tried to do this all one take there, but before we ended up stopping to do a storage issue, space issue, storage space issues there. So, as a separate two parts, uh, but I managed to fix this uh, this issue everybody. Uh, and I said before John was going to do it, I was going to be doing a second part to the other TV video, but now here it is, everybody. So, there's a couple of quick things, everybody. Everybody, first of all, of course, if you have not seen the first part of the favorite Undertaker robberies video, everybody, do me watch part one first before watching the second part here. So, as I am going to be picking up where I last left off there. Uh, second thing, everybody, but just a minor thing here, but, uh, everybody, as you all know, the past month of November there, I have grown out my beard quite a bit there, <laughs> a little bit more than usual. Uh, that's because usually in November, I usually participate in Ocean November there, uh, I've been doing it since, uh, my high school years there, but, uh, so, <laughs> but, uh, I am, I am actually gonna be getting my beard and mustache shirt a little later on, along with my hair, so, <laughs> so this will be the last time you'll get to see the beard mustache, eh, this, you know, length for quite a while, everybody, so, eh, that was my, I might get the whole thing trimmed by the time I go to the barbershop later on today, so, eh, <laughs> no, wait, see, but, it will let y'all know this will be the this will be the last video you'll get to see the the or the really thick beard I have grown over the past month and over November. So next video everybody will be either smaller or I'll be baby face hunter there <laughs> with no beard and mustache. So <laughs> anyways, uh, well I wanted to let you all that real quick there. <laughs> anyways, everybody, let me say let's go ahead and get right in part to everybody. Pay up right where I left off there. I was talking about um. Our Tinker rivalries with Shawn Michaels and Triple H there. Cover up the Shawn Michaels portion, then Triple H, then. And, yeah, trying to get sent down two of the minutes or 12 of them there, something like that. Might as well pick off everybody in, uh, um, uh, our, our Tinker and Shawn Michaels had, uh, had, had another one on show at 1980s Royal Rumble there by Kessick Match, where Shawn Michaels would win. But during the match, he would suffer an injury there that would eventually, um, which would eventually force Michaels to leave professional wrestling for the, for four years till he make his return in 2002. Although, and, and those who remember back in 1980, everybody, Shawn Michaels <laughs> would move on to lose the championship to so close he lost in there at WrestleMania 14 that year, and thus, you know, skyrocket during the it's most profitable, it's most profitable, you know, time period with the attitude there, there, so, eh. Oh, that almost, all oh, did not happen, though, everyone, um, as well, our ticket, you know, ticket, Shawn Michaels, there, animosity, carry for outside the right there, you know, like, then, they also had some animosity with one of them there, as our ticket was not necessarily a fan of Shawn Michaels' attitude during that time period there, and those of you who have studied up back in the 1990s backstage period there for wrestling, see, uh, Shawn Michaels there, had a bit of an attitude backstage there where he did not want to lose a certain superstars there, you know. But next thing was being, you know, his rivalry with Vader there, where Vader and Michaels were supposed to have three matches there. And we yeah, have for Survivor from SummerSlam to Survivor Series in their third final one at the Royal Rumble. But Michaels and then like the stiff style Vader worked uh the stiff hard uh the hard, strong style Vader had there. So he talked to Vince after just having the one match at SummerSlam. And, of course, the issues with Bret Hart there, or that time period there, which played a factor to the Montreal screw job there and stuff like that, so. And Shawn Michaels came very close to backing out the match with Austin there. And Undertaker made sure that it happened there. Just a little bit before the match started, Undertaker met up with Shawn Michaels in the gorilla position there with his fist all taped up there. He put it towards Shawn Michaels there. He's going to do the job to Austin there. Otherwise, bad things were going to happen to him there. So, uh, that... Uh, that... Got Shawn Michaels to shade his mind there. And match, as you all know, the match with Austin. Michaels played out there. And Austin became the new WWE champion there. <laughs> but over time, we're taking Shawn Michaels would, you know... You know, respect one another as individuals there, you know. And 
become, yeah, become more friendly with one there. It's, yeah, so Shawn Michaels had a better attitude over the years there and stuff like that. To, uh, and, changed, and changed himself for the better after he left WWE, the first, uh, left WWE there and made his return to 2002 there. However, it would be until 11 years later when we would see... Um... <coughs> Uh, sorry, what my brain for there. However, it will be nine years later when we see Shawn Michaels and RT Earth right one another once again. Um, I won't recap, I won't go over this too much more once I did go over this in my uh, bit with Batista. I was talking about Batista there, but uh, Shawn Michaels and RT Earth had a brief one on one encounter there in the final two of the Royal Rumble 2007 there, which I previously mentioned RT Earth would have moved on to win that matchup there. And then there was a, then there was the you know, series of tag matches there where Archer Tinker received a Batista and Charles team with John Cena there for interbrand tag matches there for all four men to face each other in their respective matches at WrestleMania 23 that year. However, it would not be until 11 years later till we see a finally got a, a proper one on one match between Shawn Michaels and the Undertaker there. <clears throat> I started another birthday. I had some food out to long ago. But anyways, of a uh, be 11 years later, we finally had that one-on-one -on -one counter once again with Shawn Michaels and the Undertaker there at WrestleMania 25, where Shawn Michaels was next in line to challenge the Undertaker and his undefeated streak there. And those two would have what uh, uh, would have arguably the greatest match in the history of WrestleMania there, which is saying a lot to the, uh, the long history of WrestleMania there. Uh, Shawn Michaels and Artair definitely had something special that night there, and, and truly, it truly is one of the greatest wrestling matches of all time there, so eh, definitely what I recommend checking out for non-wrestling fans there if they want to get into the sport, so, if they want to check out professional wrestling there. But despite the very back and forth between Artair and Michaels that night, the Artair would eventually win that match and defeat Shawn Michaels there. It'd be one year later where Shawn Michaels would challenge our Taker one more time. Four match of WrestleMania there. At first, Undertaker denied the opportunity there for Shawn Michaels there. And eventually, Shawn Michaels had to force it, had to force the Undertaker accept there after an uh, Elvis Chamber 2010. Art, uh, Shawn Michaels would cost the Undertaker the World Championship, which Chris Jericho would eventually win the match and became the, the new World Champion there. That's when Michaels got the Artaker to accept his challenge there. Artaker was set under one condition that if Shawn Michaels that if Shawn Michaels loses the match, he would have to retire from professional wrestling. As his right career would be over. And Shawn Michaels accepted those terms. And so WrestleMania came around with WrestleMania 26. The rematch between Shawn Michaels versus Artaker, the streak versus Shawn Michaels' career. And while their match was not as good as their previous the match previous year, there was still a very enjoyable match up there. Had a big fight feel to it there, considering the stakes. But despite Michael's efforts, though, Artaker eventually did put away with a two cell power to already get the win, and thus what Shawn Michaels concluded his every career there. Artaker paid his respects there, and Shawn Michaels had his last farewell to the WWE fit to the WWE, fan, the WWE fans worldwide there. And we're right off to the sunset. It would have been that way. What didn't happen happened, but I'll get into that in a little bit. One um, now to the Porsche Triple H by and when during Triple time away for WWE, uh, Triple H would be transition from being in the from being in the big card seat to be the main event player there. Mitchell and, and would move on to win the World Championship multiple times there. <laughs> And he would eventually get the challenge of the Taker is up to be a streak at WrestleMania there. The, and so far, and Triple H has the most attempts of out of everybody who challenged the Taker WrestleMania on three different challenges that on three different occasions there. And we're going to see Jamal. First one being back in 2001 there. Where Triple H put up a valiant effort, but our Taker would get the win though. Those two would have another one-on-one -on -one match a year later. I can't remember the day of the show, but it was an international show over the UK. 
or Triple H would get the win that night over the Undertaker there. <laughs> It wouldn't be until I believe, uh, I believe it wouldn't be until about about 2009 we uh, we would see Triple H R take a piece of trouble once again there. But they would face, I believe it was the two of them in the final two of the English Chamber match for the championship, which Triple H would eventually move on to win that match up there. Anyway, I almost forgot to mention that in the back of the Shawn Michaels port there that there was another there was another match up there where Triple H and Shawn Michaels teamed up. They had a triple threat team matchup of so Raw there, or they were teamed up the Degeneration X team against Chris Jericho and Big Show with the tag champions of the time period there, and they were all going up against Shawn Michaels. They were going up against John Cena, the other ticker there. It was a main event matchup there. For Raw, it was it was a match that was kind of happy, you know. And there was a matchup that was happening there, but you know, as a little, but uh, you know, for a preview, of what was to come there as Johnson would defend the WWE Championship against Triple H and Shawn Michaels at Survivor Series, or to defend the World Championship against Big Show and Chris Jericho that night. So. Uh, aside from that matchup, though, we wouldn't see Triple H and Undertaker face each other a proper one-on-one match until nine years later at WrestleMania 27, 2011 there, where Triple H and Undertaker would return on the very same night and Triple H laid down the challenge for Undertaker at WrestleMania there, and Undertaker accepted there. <laughs> And the two of them ended up facing a very brutal no horns board match there. A lot of people consider their match the best match of the night there. That's just a card there. But despite Triple H's efforts, our ticker would get the win over the game. However, Triple H would be the last one to get on his feet as during the match as after the match, our ticker ended up collapsing. And Triple H made the one to walk off his two feet. While our ticker had to be carried out on the stretcher there, so. Well, this boat, but that boy invaded the yard, taker there to have to challenge Triple H for one more match there. That was advertised as the end of an era there. Like the last time they would, the two of them would face off against one another there. And they would face each other inside the hell of a cell, everybody. And Shawn Michaels would make a comeback there as a, will make be part of this matchup as a special guest referee. As during the, from, I can't remember if it was during the 2011 2012 portion, they're probably there, you know. Shabazz got involved, and they made a call to Triple H there. And Triple H said he wanted to do so, he wanted to make sure to avenge Shawn Michaels there. Arte was like, "Is it to avenge him, Hunter, or is it because you want to do so that he couldn't do?" That eventually caused some tension there <laughs> between Triple H and Shawn Michaels going to the match up there. Eventually, the matchup ended up happening there, and. Yeah, it was a very brutal Hell in a Cell matchup there. Very emotional matchup there. It was the storytelling there. But the other taker would get the win over Triple H. And uh, the and, uh, and the matchup in the part there would be Triple Tri Tri Goals and the taker helping Triple H up there. And I kind of like shot there. All three men stay together there. Hey, one last final time there. Um, but they, you know, you know Respecting one another, it's like that. Right off the right off the sunset, called yeah, except the ring, you know. Or at least that would have been the case if what happened back in twenty eighteen didn't happen there. Now, I want to make a long story short. What day we was looking to expand more internationally? They're doing some more international shows. Some were too bad, but there was one particular place that was controversial there, which I'll get to here in a bit. But 
They need to have matches to promote the shows there. And they end up at the first one. Eh, about me bring up the Super Showdown in Australia. And the main event for that show would be Undertaker and Triple H there. And while the match was all right there, uh, it kind of it it was be the first. This will be the first of the two matches that would kind of take away what what happened, you know, six years prior. I mean, like I said, you know, the match between Triple H and Undertaker at WrestleMania 28 was supposed to be the end of an era there. The last supposed to be the last of those who faced one on one there. But then we ended up deciding they can't uh, kind of take away from that moment there and have the two face off here. And like I said, whether the match was all right, there was nowhere near as good as their previous matches, you know, six, seven years ago. <laughs> but Troy H. Wood ended up getting the win over the Undertaker that night. And there was, all, uh, there was also some involvement from Kane and Shawn as Kane was in Undertaker's quarter and... Shawn Michaels was a Triple H's quarter there, and well, that eventually led to, well, the match between the Bars of Destruction, Kane the Undertaker, versus Shawn Michaels and Triple H, the Generation X at Crown Jewel 2018 in Saudi Arabia, and, and when I... And well, there was already a lot of controversy, you know, you know, right around this there, you know, not just you know, not just from wrestlers' perspective there, but also a certain controversy that happened, you know, during uh, during around the same time during we announced they were, they were going to do a show there, about the Saudi Arabian government, and and the death of uh, one of the Washington Post journalists there. I'm not going to get into that there. Very gruesome stuff, but yeah. Yeah, there was not, yeah, there was a very, you know, they, we didn't have any intention to cancel the show there. You know, they were still going forward. That, that led to, they we get a lot of heat there and stuff like that. Uh, you just ignored that controversy, though. There were a lot, there were a good number of wrestling fans that were upset with they we making this match up here because it took, a, because it's taken away, you know, like I said, previous matches that, you know, Artigar had with Triple H and, and Shawn Michaels there, you know, especially for Shawn Michaels there since, you know, his in ring career, his 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 ending with Undertaker matchup at WrestleMania 26 was a good was a perfect way for him to go out there, for him to come back here, you know, because we need to a promotion, you know, for maybe it for a questionable expansion internationally wise. There, a lot of wrestling fans upset, you know. And you just ignore the controversies there and stuff like that. The show overall was not was not very well received. It was ar it's arguably the worst WWE pay per view that happened that year. Yeah. The yeah, same show where had shame had um had where we had a tournament to quote the quote unquote crown the best in the world, best wrestler in the world. That was won by Shane McMahon, who's not an active wrestler and had was a authoritarian figure authoritative figure during that time period. And had Brock Lesnar win back to the Universal Championship two months after he lost it to Roman Reigns at SummerSlam. And nearly saw all the momentum Braun Strowman build up for him. Uh, uh, WWE build up. All the momentum WWE had built up for Braun Strowman and ruined it in one night. And you know, the main event of that show was that, like I said, there was a structure for his D Generation X there. And well. Well, it's not the worst wrestling match in the world there. It's definitely, this match should not do anyone justice there, you know. There especially, there were certain spots there, like, for example, Mont Charles tried to do a moonsault there, but he nearly missed Undertaker and Kane there. And it could have, and it could have very badly there. There was one part where Charles and Kane were fighting on top turnbuckle there. And, and Charles ended up, you know, grabbing Kane's mask and Kane ended up falling over there. <laughs> Which was that what was not supposed to happen there and stuff like that. You know, like I said, this match should not do anyone justice there. And you know, Triple H should end up getting to win that match up there. That was said done there, you know. 
Yeah, a lot of people don't want to remember the, you know, those 2018 matches there for good reason, you know. Not necessarily not the best in their career, you know. They're far from the best, you know, matches that, you know, that Archer had with Triple H and Shawn Michaels there. Plus, like I said, took out the way for the moments that happened six or seven years prior there, you know, in the beginning of the decades, so. <laughs> but ignore the match that happened in 2018 there. Shawn Michaels and Triple H there, they've definitely given Darth some of the toughest matches career there. I definitely think they should, they should have a place to some, you know, Arctic's best rivals there, so. <laughs> anyway, next up, everybody, we talk about. <laughs> next up, everybody, is Mick Foley. <laughs> More specifically, his time when he faced Arctic as Mankind there. Those of you who remember back in the late 1990s there, I should remember this rivalry very funnily there. <laughs> Mick Foley bursts on the scene there as Mankind. Uh, he was portrayed as Artigar's biggest threat thus far. The first two had their first major encounter at that year's SummerSlam a Boiler Room Brawl match. Which Mankind would end up winning there, but through some chicanery as that would be the night where Paul Bearer would end up a train the Undertaker there. After six years of two, uh, six years of the two of them being together, there went not. Um, this mankind was uh, this new uh, partner there, yeah, you know, something like that. But that was just a bit. But that would not be the end of it, though. As the two would face off each other two months later, and in your house of it there, the buried a live match. But mankind would eventually win that matchup as well. Coming 2 0 against the Undertaker there. Do we have a third matchup at 1996 Survivor Series there? Where Paul Bearer will be locked inside of a cage hanging above the ring. <laughs> As Meg Kai Undertaker would face each other there. At that time, Undertaker, after three different tips, finally got the victory over Mankind. Uh, victory over mankind. <laughs> and would and there and during 1997, those two the two of them would take a brief break from rivalry with the I think a break for one of them there. However, the nineteen ninety eight the rivalry would re, would be reunited there. But the role is a little bit reversed there. Our taker was portrayed as a baby face while mankind was a heel. Uh The two of them were kind of in, in between their phases at the time there. And eventually, co uh, their rivalry will eventually include at King of the Ring 1998 there, that Hell in a Cell match, which is probably the most well known Hell in a Cell match in the history of the matchup there. <laughs> and it's, a, it's the same one there where Mad Kai, where Rick Foley got tossed off 20 foot, off the 20 foot cage there onto the announcer table. I got choke slammed through the ring and through the top cell by the yard tier there. Yeah. And despite Foley's efforts, despite Mankind's efforts there, our ticker would eventually get the win over Mankind. That's conclude the rivalry there, but. <laughs> but, I said, Mick Foley, you know, during his time, there was rivalry with our Mankind there. Definitely belongs to the, you know. Uh, I do definitely try to place this some, yeah. Our fans' best rivalries there, and a favorite for me, wrestling fans, there, yeah, since, you know. Then, like, it's kind of similar to Brock Lesnar there. When Mankind first came up there, it put our in a different position than usual there, where he had to, he was in, he was having, he was having trouble against someone there, like, going there, and stuff like that. So, uh, I think I had to eventually, you know, try to you know, fight back against some of whatnot there. But Blossom to them had some of the most barrel matches during the 1990s there. From the Boiler Room Brawl to the Barry Light match. And they and their Hell is Soul match there and stuff like that. So, <laughs> yeah, Big Foley, Big, and uh, most of the least, time is Mankind, Faces are taken there. At least you have a place, yeah. As a place of my favorite rivalries with our ticket there, so. 
And speaking of Super Soars, I never take around had rivalries with the Knights. These are my kind of briefly going back to the end to everybody. As now we're gonna be talking about Stone Cold Steve Austin there. <laughs> As later on in 1998, their other ticker would eventually challenge, yeah, would be good for an Austin and the WWE Championship there. <laughs> Austin did briefly lose a championship um, <laughs> and after King the during King the Ring there, the first blood match against Kane. Austin would win, eventually win the title back one night later there. Uh, the Taker eventually decided to try to challenge the championship himself there. <laughs> Which led to Austin, his first account with Austin and 1998. SummerSlam there. Right. Uh, very hard fight match with one another there. But he and Austin would get the win over the dead man there. <laughs> But the two of them respected one another after the matchup, though. <laughs> As there was one part where Kane would come out there. They, they was going to be helping out the Undertaker. Undertaker told him to go back to the back there and slam it. So, <laughs> However, you know, Austin and Undertaker's army will, you know, well, they started getting heat up there during the 1999 there, where Taker would start the Ministry of Darkness there, a fact she had there for the superstars and whatnot. <laughs> and he was gutted for Austin there. <laughs> Do whatever they can to make Austin a time to be a nightmare there. As also at the same time, though, he was also going through the McMahon family there, and, well, <laughs> definitely had some of the more controversial moments that they had to there where where Undertaker was, was had unholy bewayed this the way unholy way to stuff he made there, and had lost and had so close he lost it on a cross there at one point there on episode of Raw. So, but but then, you know, Undertaker mentioned he was doing for a great uh, for a individual called the Greater Power there or something like that. <laughs> However, it would have a lot less to reveal as it turned out it was Mr. McMahon who was the greater power there. Uh, he was the only doing to play mind games with Austin there and stuff like that. Uh, and so the, the corporate uh, the corporate cabinet and the Ministry of Darkness and for the corporate ministry there which became a Overblowing fa faction there and stuff like that. <laughs> On the levels of the Dungeon of Doom for 1995 WCW fans who may remember that. <laughs> now, I can't remember which show there, but Artinger would eventually manage to win the WWE Championship from So Cold Steve Austin there. Uh, assistance from Mr. McMahon. Artinger would, in a way, I believe. I can't remember if it was his third or fourth time as WWE Champion yeah, during his match with Austin there, but he ended up winning on the championship from Austin there. And the rivalry would conclude at Over the Edge 1999 there. Where, simply, where Austin faced the Archive of the championship there in an isolation that if. That if Austin would win, not only become WWE Champion, but Mr. Man would be gone from WWE. Which, yeah, you know, that night would had it was infamous there, you know, for the unfortunate death of Owen Hart there, as he was supposed to face the Godfather for the year called Championship there that night. They have an entrance coming out from the Raptors, but the accident happened. <sighs> so, I think how difficult to watch the show there because of that, you know. But Austin would eventually win the match up there, and Mr. Man would be gone for the WWE for about five months, I believe, so three or four, four or five months there. He'd eventually make his return after the... 
they're on the top here during the scene where Triple H would be transitioned to become a player there, but it was the champion, stuff like that there. So, hey. This, I prefer the Mr. Man, of course, there. But that was the last, but aside from a couple of other matches there, you know, like when Artaker and Austin were fighting each other, Armageddon held a still match with the championship. And the brief matchup and take matchup there where all championships are the line, where Artaker and Kane were taking on Triple H and so was in Austin there. I believe that year's back at uh, back last 2001. Or the tag details, the air title, and the Chichas were the lot there. That blues it up. That would be the last one on one match Austin Articker would have with one of the there, but. And all the spot. Yeah, despite, you know, some controversial points there, you know, Austin Articker, Matt Trisha for the most part, were very irritated there, and, you know, definitely had some always iconic moments in the yeah, attitude there. there. And also definitely yeah, you know, had have a place as some of our team's biggest rivals over the years, so yeah. Everyone next up everybody. We have C a Puck everyone. Everyone everyone I feel like our I feel like of all of the other tickers rivalries there, his rivalry with C a Puck is probably the most underrated in my opinion there. <laughs> The two didn't have a whole lot of matches together, but the matches they did have were very entertaining. And a few started SummerSlam 19. Uh, sorry, wait for, sorry, what about your brief right there? The few would kick off at SummerSlam 2009 there after a CF Puck successfully regained the World Championship from Jeff Hardy, the ladder match. Or it was, I, I can't remember if it was a TLC or ladder match up there. But CF Puck did not take too long to celebrate, though, as Art Taker would make his return there. And made his intentions clear that he would go after CM Punk and the World Heavyweight Championship there. After CM Punk concluded his rivalry, Jeff Hardy episode was smacked out there in a steel cage match where if Jeff Hardy would lose, he would leave the WWE. Which that eventually happened. Yeah. CM Punk would eventually win on that match or take the World Championship there. Jeff would be out of WWE. And would not return until, two, until eight years later and at WrestleMania 33. With his brother Matt, as they're traveling the indie scene and be a part of Impact Wrestling during those years, so but that our tear up tag and see puck was again after the match, and they would those two of them would face each other at at breaking point that year. It would be a submission match for the Royal Championship there. Uh, it was a good, it was a good match up there, but it had, but it ended up having a kind of lackluster finish to it, though. But as they ended up pulling, you know, similar to a much old screw job there, where it, see, Punk will have the Anaconda Vice locked in there on the Art Taker. Bar did not tap out, but they were long enough calling for the bell. The tell referee called for the bell there. See, Punk will eventually return. Take the world and church it that way there, so I mean I would lead there take her <laughs> force a T log to give a matchup after I gave him a limo ride there. <laughs> and the two that would face each other had to at Hell in a Cell there. Where that time where the Arctic book or C Pop a good effort there. Bartier would end up winning the matchup and became the World Heavyweight Champion once again. And those two would brief will face each other once again uh, later on that month. And Bray, uh, Bray writes there, fail, although Fatal 4 match along with Batista and Bray Stereo for the World Title there, which I previously mentioned during the Batista rivalry portion there. <laughs> but that would be the last time we see Undertaker and CM Puck face off one on one. <laughs> Sorry, I had the burp there. Anyways, so, uh, until 2013, there, where CM Punk decided to challenge the Undertaker as a as of the history of WrestleMania there. And they did a very good job, you know, with the build up to the matchup there, although 
uh, there was a bit of controversy to the to the matchup though, as uh, during the during the during the build up, everybody, uh, as you all know, everybody remember at that time period, uh, early twenty thirteen, Paul Bearer unfortunately passed away there, and well, then we decided to incorporate his passing into the feud with CM Punk and the Arctic there. And well, there was one ain't there was one part of Raw episode Raw there that ended controversially there as a CM Punk had earned his hands there and got ashes out and started pouring all over the earth here and stuff like that, you know. So Well it did do its job again again, fans not liking CM Punk that much there. It felt, uh, the wrestling fans I thought it was a little distasteful there. You know, since, you know, those, uh, all happened during, you know, not too long after Paul Bearer passed away there. Well, that would eventually lead to see a Puck and our Tigger having a very back-and-forth matchup at... Very back-and-forth matchup at WrestleMania 29 that year. And see a Puck put a very strong show against the other Tigger there. But in the end, though, our tier would get the win and manage to beat CM Punk there. Because he would streak for another year until he would eventually lose to Brock Lesnar a year later at WrestleMania 30. Everyone, you know, and everyone, I said, and, uh, the rivalry with CM Punk may not be the most memorable rivalry there, but I thought, uh, me personally, I really enjoyed the rivalry between uh, CM Punk and Artigger there. And I thought, bad, I thought the matches of the two, the two in the pad were very entertaining there, yeah. And then, they, they, um, yeah. May not be the best of uh, Artigger's rivalries there, as a place of my favorites in his uh, uh, favorite rivalries from the Artigger his career there, and stuff like that. Now everybody has for the final person on the list here for favorite Undertaker robberies, everybody. It's gonna be featured Edge, so <clears throat> I sorry went for the burp in there, but anyways, I'm, uh... I said what the final person I have on the list favorite Undertaker robberies, everybody would is gonna be Edge or one. And their rivalry technically started off at May of 2007, as I previously, previously mentioned there, with going over the rivalry between Batista and an Undertaker there, with Edge Cash in the World League Championship. And on the Undertaker that became the new World League Champion there. Over Undertaker, over the rivalry would not kick off initially there, as Undertaker would be out of action for number one other to recover from injuries he sustained there. We'll eventually return later on the fall there. But then Edge ended up suffering an injury there. He was forced to relinquish, relinquish the World League Championship there. Yeah. Which was eventually won by the Great Khali. They was eventually won Batista. They, they had a rivalry with the Art Ticket there. As far as series there, while well, I previously mentioned, Edge made his return during the matchup there. And of course, the Art Ticket, the World League Championship there, helping Batista went out. And next month at our again. Uh, Undertaker, Edge, and Batista face church of that matchup there. Sissons through, you know, from Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder there. The Edge heads. <laughs> Edge would win, would win the match and would win back the World League Championship. Uh, it would be a little while before we saw the two of the face off there. As Edge had a big rivalry with Raven Mysterio for the title there. Our Tigger would eventually get a chance to face Edge at WrestleMania 24 after winning the the only Chamber match at the way out when he came down to hit Batista there. And those who would face the turn for the World League Championship. WrestleMania 24 there. They have a very back and forth matchup there. But the end, Undertaker would eventually defeat Edge to become the World Heavyweight Champion once again.
I do have our match of Backlash there. Arthur with that match up there. And do we have we have a TLC match at one night stand with for the world for the world championship there with Big State if Edge up loses, he would not challenge the world championship again as long as RT was champ. But if RT ended up losing, he would be fought released for WWE. A very brutal TLC match two of them had there by the end. Edge would basically get the win over on the take to put Artiger through two tables. They basically climbed the ladder, reclaimed the world championship there. For a brief time, Art Tigger was no longer with the WWE. But everyone. Um that's all I that though, Ed, they started going downhill for Edge as he would lose the World Championship to CM Punk after CM Punk cash in on Edge on the night after uh, Night of Champions there. Where Edge retained the title for Batista that night. And CM Punk would become the world, new World Champion there. And thus, the World Championship was brought over to Raw. And during the draft period there, Triple H, who's the champion, was drafted over SmackDown there. Edge would try and challenge the WWE Championship there. And he was in a relationship with Vic Guerrero. You know, I started back in late 2007. The two eventually got married. <laughs> However, um, uh, Triple H jumped revealed on the way night there that <laughs> Edge ended up kissing Alicia Fox, Vicky's assistant at that time. That caused tension between the two of them there. <laughs> And Edgewood eventually challenged Triple H. I uh, can't remember which pay per view, but I believe it was with Great American Bash, I believe, where he would try to challenge Triple H for the Royal Championship. Sorry, not sorry, Brain Friend. No, WWE Championship, but with it, it don't lose into the game. And Vic Guerrero uh, be very still bitter over Edge <laughs> as we're having the weary night. Decided to put Edge in a hell of a cell match with The Undertaker, who she reinstated there. Uh, Dirt, uh, but Undertaker did not appear on the screen there, but Art, but Edge fell as present there. Edge ended up going crazy over time there and stuff like that. And attacking Chavo and Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder. And he had threatened to take B. Guerrero down with him to hell. Start, it's, people kept telling him that Artur was going to sit to hell and stuff like that there. And then, at the big conclusion by SummerSlam 2008, Edge versus Undertaker inside Hell in a Cell. It was a very brutal match up there. Edge put value effort there. He, Edge put, he put Undertaker through the table a couple times there. But in the end, Undertaker would get his revenge on Edge by, by defeating him there, the two-cell pile driver. However, Undertaker would send Edge to Hell thereafter. He got Arter got a ladder, force Edge to climb up that there, and Arter choke slammed Edge off the ladder through the ring, and Arter did a signature pose, and the flames start erupting from through where Edge fell through the ring. That's included the rivalry there, and yeah, you know. yeah. I really, I really, you know, Edge and Arter are, so, are some of my favorite wrestlers of all time. There, I really enjoyed the few they had in 2007, 2008 there. <laughs> It definitely has a place amongst my favorite rivalries with the Undertaker there. So, I'm going to be all checking out there if you have the chance to. So, definitely some of the best matches Undertaker Edge has in their careers my personal opinion there. So, <laughs> sorry to hiccup the end. Sorry to hiccup in there when. But anyways, everybody, that concludes my favorite rivalries for the Undertaker and my. Um, uh, um, it is gonna be a bummer to see Undertaker no longer around, but yeah, he had a he had a long historical career there, and he had a lot of memorable moments there, a lot of memorable robberies there, and you know his career he definitely will be his career will definitely not be forgotten, it will not be replicated there. So thank you very much, Undertaker. We're gonna miss you, man, and best of luck wherever you do next, Undertaker. Alright, that concludes this video, everyone. If you liked what you saw here, make sure you hit the like button. 
do check out the subscribe hit the bell notification icon so we will say it blows here on the channel i'll see you all next video everyone the next time it's hard big sign up peace it's hard to make sign up peace <laughs> sorry i went for the start there right it was sorry about my peace